thanks for joining me, Steve Keen. It's great to have you back. Um, Steve Keen, Professor of Economics at the um, Kingston University. Thank you. Nice to be here, Chris. We've heard a lot about austerity and the need to reduce public debt in, in the run-up to, to the election from all the main political parties. Mm. What's your view on, the, on this and their policies? Uh, it's naive. The, the, the most positive thing I can say about those views is it's naive and childish uh, because they have a vision about how the economy operates that you might as well learn in a kindergarten class. Uh, you know, and, uh, that we have daddy who runs the, runs the household and daddy has to make sure that enough income comes in and daddy has to save, etc. otherwise the family will be on the street. And when you look at the way they talk about the government needing to run a, a surplus and both parties are really selling this idea, it's really that kindergarten version of what a government and what an economy is like. Now, I've, normally, you know, I have, have quite a few fights with Paul Krugman, but I've got to say, uh, with a few little nuances, completely agree with the argument he made in The Guardian long read just this last weekend to say that this is, uh, you can't think about the economy and the government's role in the economy like a child might think about a household budget, which is all that they're being sold by the both politicians of both sides. And it is the public debt, uh, is it's a sign of the state of the economy, but it's not a cause of the state of the economy. And by focusing on that and trying to reduce the public debt, they're likely to push the economy, first of all, into another slump, but also if they actually succeeded in holding that level of surplus they're both fantasizing about, they'd cause the next financial crisis that way or cause a, a, a serious decline in economic activity. They certainly won't cause what they both argue will cause, which is sustained economic growth. So, so what should they be doing with the budget? I think I've worked out a way that people can actually visualise this. I'll take you through a bit of a visual exercise. Draw a rectangle. Call that the entire economy. Okay? Divide it in half. One half is the government and the other half is the public. Okay? If the government is going to run a surplus, which is what both Labor and Conservatives are saying is their, their objective and everybody thinks it's a good idea, that means that the taxes the government's imposing upon the public have to be greater than the spending that they also do to the public. So what you've got therefore is a flow of money it has to be going from the public box you've got there, you know, the private economy, to the government. Okay? I'll call that flow net gov. That means for the government to run a surplus, they've got to be taking money out of your bank accounts. Now that's to begin with, that's the opposite of what people think. Okay? They think our oh, government saves money, I can save money too. No. If the government's going to run a surplus, it means it's got to tax the, the the people more than it spends on the people and therefore it is taking money out of people's bank accounts. Step one. Question is where do you get the money? Now if they do it once off, you know, money comes out of your bank account, you can cope once or twice. If they're talking about doing this on a sustained basis, then you've got to have a sustained flow of money from the public's bank accounts to the government. So where do you get the money? Now, you can't print it yourself, okay? We're talking money here, we're not talking selling widgets to the government. You've got to provide a flow of cash. Where do you get the money? You can only get it, we're not looking at exports just to look at a closed economy. Sure. You've got to borrow it from the banks. If the government wants to, you, you have a flow of money going to the government from your bank account to the government, then you've, to keep your bank account constant, you've got to be borrowing money from the banks. So if you're going to have the government running a permanent surplus, and the public st having simply a constant amount of money in its bank accounts, there's got to be a constant borrowing of money from the banks to provide the money the government wants. Which means, consequently, you're getting to maintain the government uh, surplus and help it reduce its debt, you've got to be going to get debt to the banks. Okay? Now, if you do that and you simply do it in such a way that you maintain a constant amount of money in the public's bank accounts in general, then the turnover of that money what is what generates economic activity. So the only way you can have that situation of the government running a, a surplus, being financed by the public, borrowing money from the banks to provide that money, therefore keeping a constant amount of money in circulation in the economy, the only way the economy could grow in monetary terms would be if that money turned over more rapidly. Now we know empirically it's been turning over less rapidly over time, okay, and its rate of turnover goes down during a crisis, not up. Okay. So if economic growth slows down, people hoard money, they spend less rapidly, it turns over less quickly, so you get a contracting economy coming out of that. Now if you put that together for a substantial period of time, if you run a surplus four or five years, which is the sort of stuff that both parties are saying kindergarten style is a good idea, daddy's saving the money, 
What it means is you're going to have rising private debt with a relatively constant GDP, a rising private servicing pressure as well. At some point the public will stop borrowing money from the banks and you'll go into a downturn. So running a sustained government deficit is a recipe for a future economic crisis caused by the private sector getting into too much debt, stopping borrowing and then the money turn at money level money the economy going backwards because as well as the government taking money out people try to pay their debts now and the amount of money in the economy contracts and you go into a serious downturn now that in a nutshell is why Greece and Spain and Italy and France are in the state they're in right now and both political parties are saying we think it's a good thing to do the same idea it's kindergarten thinking about the economy so if you go for conservatives austerity heavy or labor austerity light you're still essentially on the path to um, uh, economic stagnation. Yeah, and uh, we're looking now at uh, what's happening globally. Uh, stagnation is the is the story of the of the global economy right now, and the reason is again that issue I mentioned about the role of private debt. That's what's actually causing it globally. Too much private debt was accumulated during the bubble. Not enough has been paid off during the downturn. Uh, the growth that's coming out is now coming off a huge level of private debt, so the, the room for the private sector to continue borrowing is quite limited. And if you have governments at the same time trying to balance their budgets, then you have money being taken out of the economy effectively by the two sources that are supposed to provide money, which are both the banks providing private loans, which creates money in people's deposit accounts, and the government running a deficit, which also puts money into your economy. If you have both of them being taken out, then the amount of money turning over in the economy isn't growing rapidly. And even with good ideas, you won't get finance for good ideas. You won't be able to implement them in the very first place, and you won't get growth. So essentially, this is why we've got so-called surprise um uh, poor GDP figures for in the yeah. US and the UK yeah, for the uh, first yeah. quarter. It's, it's, it's surprise only if you don't analyse the role of money. Yes. No, you, last year you were saying that, that things w were going to end up like this. Mm. They're ending up so. faster than I thought it would. I mean, I'm, you know, the figures came out of America just this last few days of the annualised growth rate of 0.2%. That's rounding error from zero. I mean, talking 0.05% per quarter measuring the entire change in the real GDP of America. Uh, that's trivial. And England's heading in a similar direction. So it is, it is the whole thing has been caused by letting private debt get out of control, not even focusing upon its role in the economy, let alone watching whether it's getting too, too high or too small. I can never see that happening. Uh, and then not doing anything to reduce it when the government does have the capacity to help us get their private debt levels down. You know, fantasizing about the public debt being the problem instead when in England's case private debt's two, two and a half times the level of government debt, similar sort of story in America. It's just bizarre to watch. Now, you'd get my vote for Chancellor in a heartbeat, but uh, <laughs> unfortunately you're not going to be elected. So is there any mainstream political party that, that's got a, a more sensible economic policy? The only ones who are close to a sensible policy in that sense are the Greens and the SNP because they at least are talking about the dangers of the private banking sector and they're seeing the banking sector as the cause of the problems rather than the potential solution, which is still the way that the Conservatives look at the banking sector and, and Labor, in effect, leans you know, banking light rather than banking heavy. Thank you very much. Thanks, Chris.